Okay gang, welcome back. So in this unit that we're calling carbonyls, there are about six mechanisms that you need to know forwards and backwards and know extremely well. If that sounds like overkill, just trust me, it'll make you so much better with reactions, with synthesis, with everything in this unit. And like I said, this is kind of the point in OCHEM 2 where kids start to fall back and then if you do fall back like that, it's really hard to dig yourself out of this hole. So trust me, there's about, I'm chunking these mechanisms up into videos where we're going to do them forwards and backwards and I have a worksheet that's going to make you practice them forwards and backwards. I highly suggest that you do these mechanisms until you are ready to just throw up because you hate them so much. But if you know them that well, you'll be just fine. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is called hydrate formation. But before we get into it, I want to highlight a few key things. So in every single mechanism in this worksheet, we're going to do one thing and you're going to get so sick of doing it. But here's the reason why we're going to do it. If you look at our carbonyl carbon, right, I'm just drawing a three carbon ketone. We're used to attacking this carbonyl with things like Grignard uh, nucleophiles or alkyne anions, things like that. However, in this unit, we're going to be using much, uh, nu we're going to be using nucleophiles that are less reactive. They're called softer nucleophiles. They're not as reactive. Things like water or methanol or, I don't know, diethylamine, things like that. So to get these reactions to go where we want them to, the very first step in every mechanism that you will ever do in this unit, and that's a, that's a fact, is you are going to protonate this carbonyl. So if I'm going to draw hydronium, you will always protonate your carbonyl. And here's why. If we protonate this carbonyl, we can draw some resonance. Surprise. If I were to swing these electrons in the double bond up, you can see protonation gives us this resonance form. Right? You can see that this is a pretty uh, significant resonance hybrid, right? Because does oxygen like to bear this positive charge? No, not really at all. So, is it necessarily great that we're putting a positive charge on this carbon? No, not really. But, oxygen does love getting rid of it, so this is a pretty significant resonance hybrid. Protonating this carbonyl oxygen does make this carbon significantly more positive, aka more susceptible to nucleophilic attack. That's going to help us out with our nucleophiles that aren't necessarily the strongest ones we've been working with. Okay, so just know that protonating the carbonyl is a very important step and you will do it in the first step of pretty much every mechanism we draw this unit. Okay, so let's talk about hydrate formation. I'll show you what a hydrate is at the end. Actually, this is a hydrate right there. It's a carbon on, or two oxygen, two alcohols on the same carbon. Okay, so if we take our carbonyl, very first step, protonate that sucker. Let's draw hydronium. If your teacher is totally okay with having you just draw floating H pluses, go ahead and draw those as your source of protons. But just to be explicit, I'm going to draw hydronium because I know some teachers are sticklers about that. Okay, so let's protonate our carbonyl oxygen. Right? That means we have our protonated carbonyl. We know that makes our carbonyl more carbonyl carbon more reactive, more susceptible to nucleophilic attack. And we have water left over, right? Okay. So now this is our nucleophile in this case, as you can see in our product, right? Let's swoop in and attack our trigonal planar trigonal planar carbonyl carbon. That's a little more reactive. Once we do that, we need to kick up this pair of electrons in that double bond. I'm going to draw the result down here. That means we'll have an OH over here. That's this group right there. And we have an oxygen with two hydrogens and a positive charge. That's the water that just came in and attacked, right? Well, we know we don't have a protonated oxygen in our product, so let's clean them up. We have a bunch of water laying around, so let's have him just snatch up one of these H's, one of these protons, those electrons go back on oxygen, and we finally get our hydrate product. Okay, and more importantly, we produced acid. So, in every mechanism, guys, you'll see if you do it right and you kind of keep track of your 
uh, your waters and your, your uh, either H pluses or your hydroniums, this acid is always catalytic. You should always end up with it. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too mind blowing. Let's see how we make a hydrite in a basic environment going forward. We're not going to mess around with the reverse reaction because it involves hydroxide leaving as a leaving group. We're just not going to get into that. Okay, so this reaction is actually relatively short and sweet. On, this is the only time we won't protonate the carbonyl in the beginning, and that's because in a basic environment, there's no H pluses just randomly floating around for this carbonyl oxygen to snatch up. Also, hydroxide is a much better nucleophile than water, so we don't need to activate our carbonyl. In fact, he's so reactive, he's just going to swing in and going to attack our trigonal planar carbonyl carbon, and when that happens, we're going to force the electrons in this double bond two of them to swing up. Okay, we'll draw the result of that electron flow. We'll have an O minus produced on the left, this guy from that uh, carbonyl oxygen right there, as well as we'll have our OH now placed on that carbon. Okay, all we need to do is just tack on a hydrogen onto that O minus and we'll be done. Since we don't have any H plus or H3 O plus, we're gonna kind of get that proton from water. So we'll go ahead and snatch him up, throw those electrons onto oxygen, and now you can see we've produced our hydrate, so we did what we were supposed to do, and if you can see, kind of like in the last mechanism, we produced our base that we started with, so this is base catalyzed. Okay, like I said, we're not going to draw a reverse, mecha reverse mechanism for this. This was more of an intro, right? Hydrates, not terribly exciting. Now in the, next, uh, in the next video, we're gonna kind of use these principles in what's called acetal formation. And you'll see really kind of the same similar steps, but we'll see that there's a few extra and there's a little bit of a thermodynamic tie-in, but I have a big worksheet with all the mechanisms for you to practice on. I know this is a one of, there's six questions. This is question 1A, the acidic formation of a hydrate, and the basic, formation is 1B. So you can either hold off or you can start on question one. Either way, see you in the next video.